Here's who's on top. SB19's Bazinga spends a record-breaking seventh week at number one. The Filipino group's single surpasses the six-week run of BTS's Butter. Good day. I'm Dr. Christine Carmela Aramos. I am a Mapuan professor of the Department of Liberal Arts. I am a full professor teaching ethics and art appreciation. The module for today is about a tribute to the Filipinos concept of love. The topic not only applies to the concern on democracy and dissemination of Filipinos' indigenous thoughts that include oral history and traditional knowledge, thus helping the preservation of our cultural identity. My familiarity with the topic and other past research I had undertaken in this area initiated an examination of my personal experiences as a researcher in this specific context. Therefore, this lecture is not reporting research findings, but as a commentary on a Filipino milieu and how reflections reshaped the interpretation The Philippine archipelago is one of the richest and its tropical destinations are often voted the most beautiful on earth. As of 2022, over 7,641 islands in the archipelago, around 2,000 are inhabited. I often visit beaches in the Philippines, such as in Bataan and Mindoro Oriental. Let me share with you one of my favorite songs, I'll Always Stay in Love This Way by Boy Katindig, featuring Baron Barbers, interpreted by Regine Velasquez. given you with all the things that we have all been through I've never stayed in love before as much as I have stayed in love with you There's nothing more 
song was a popular staple in my favorite classical FM jazz station. The song, though simple, has a strong influence on me. These are some of my experiences here in the Philippines that remind me that we need a simple life to be happy. In my search for life at times, I do find happiness healing, and answers in wind and water. I now begin this lecture with philosophical, metaphysical, and existential. The Filipino indigenous thoughts serve as a humble way to avert the irrelevance of culture and tradition of the Filipinos amidst a fast-paced life and how they shape our nation's history. Loob and compassed Filipinos' humanity and daily experiences. There are folk sayings in this work that are grounded on regional beliefs for there are many ethno-linguistic groups. As I discuss, I will also integrate the essence of loob as it unfolds to a range of artistic mediums. After the brief introduction of indigenous thoughts, the concept of loob will lead to the concept of love as experienced by Filipinos, which my reflections are based on. My immersion in our culture is a different one from the Western race. This lecture emphasizes that philosophy should not retreat from the leading aspects of daily life and experience rather could facilitate envisioning a global community that emphasizes a nonviolent transformation as well as social and political creativity in planning and use of science and technology. Many studies by Leonardo Mercado, Florentino Timbreza, and Rolando Gripaldo popularized the quest to articulate Filipino indigenous thoughts. At the same time, several studies also focused on the Filipino concept of love. Among the latter though, there are distinct trends observed in the Philippines over the years, such as the debate on divorce and LGBTQ plus marriage. These studies seek to defend claims that are important and illuminating. They highlight some of the unique challenges faced by Filipinos in a pluralistic society. Though these studies are worthwhile, they also navigate various difficulties. Southeast Asian societies faced extremely rapid change. Schools have failed to connect the meaningful past to the present. In the Philippines, 
the culture of the public world seems to be dominated by business and consumerism, mass media, anonymity, and individualization have deemed the view of the nation, the common good, and civic activism. Globalization challenges the concepts of Filipinos. From the perspective of Martin Heidegger, the greatest danger is that calculative thinking someday may come to be accepted and practiced as the only way of thinking. Heidegger calls the author availability and sheer manipulability the essence of technology. The danger is not the destruction of nature or culture, but a restriction in our way of thinking. A leveling of our understanding. His philosophy underscored that humanity is reduced to a stockpile, in service to, and on call, for technological purposes. Revealing or exploitation of nature happens. However, revealing never comes to an end. This photo shows the interior of Magellan's Cross in Cebu, planted by the Portuguese and Spanish explorers, headed by Ferdinand Magellan in 1521. The Christian cross symbolizes loob that aspires to harmony with others and nature to be in one with God. This explained the dualism in body-soul and emotional rational of the Filipinos. The holistic model underpins the unified entity of the world and the non-dualistic point of view of the world in addressing challenges faced by Filipinos in a pluralistic society. This is the Mactan Shrine, also in Cebu, believed to be the battle site in 1886 that testifies to the Filipinos' first act of resistance towards the Spanish conquistadores. Lapu-Lapu is remembered as the first Filipino hero. Let me continue about the significance of loob and the concept of love in Philippine artworks. In Philippine history, the theological dimension of loob was also influenced by the Augustinians, Recollects, Franciscans, Dominicans, and other congregations who had taken part in the Christianization of the country. The friars came as missionaries, not colonization, for being in the Philippines, for the land had neither gold nor spices. The long and challenging journey for the Filipinos means learning new knowledge, language, culture, and changing beliefs. One can understand how a person can try from the perspective of faith. There are four of the churches that have been declared National Cultural Treasures for Cultural, Historical, and Architectural Importance. The four Baroque churches are the Immaculate Conception of San Agustin in Manila, the Nuestra Señora de la Asuncion in Ilocos Sur, the San Agustin in Ilocos Norte, and Santo Tomas de Villanueva in Iloilo. Structures that were developed during the Spanish period include schools and hospitals. Some parts of Intramuros, Manila reflect the antiquity of architecture and European influences. 
the builders struggle with earthquakes and thus the massive buttresses of the churches. This stained glass window of the minor basilica of Our Lady of Mount Carmel Church, for instance, focused on Mother Mary's early life until her assumption. I often visit this church every July 16, my natal day. Nearby is a Buddhist temple where I practice walking meditation. In Wisdom Park, near the church, practicing walking meditation teaches me to take relaxed steps again as our steps are way down and we cannot appreciate paths. A peaceful world depends on whether one can take peaceful steps or not. The flowers that you can see here refer to a Buddhist saying that when one walks meditatively, a flower blooms. Another ancient basilica is of St. Martin of Tours in Batangas. This is the town where my late mother Shalita lived. One needs to back away as the camera's viewfinder finds it hard to fit the massive edifice of the Taal Basilica. It took some steps back to finally enclose the shot. Almost 100 meters long and 45 meters wide, made of adobe and coral stones, this is the largest church not only in the Philippines but throughout the whole of Asia. Doña Marcela Marino de Agoncillo, also from Batangas, is a principal seamstress of the first and official flag. Her legacy will forever be remembered as our flag is proudly waved every June 12, the celebration of the Philippine independence. This is a very important protocol one should observe. Simply put, the blue part must be on top when shown horizontally and on the left when shown vertically at all times except when in times of war. Horizontally, blue is on top to indicate the prevalence of peace and vertically, left because our reading orientation is from left to right. I will proceed to feature one of the central issues of the ethical views of Filipinos. The virtue of love. Broadly, love is divided into two types, authentic and inauthentic. Genuine love gives meaning to life. According to the Ilocanos, love is the comfort of life. Aliw sa buhay ang pag-ibig. Similarly, the Ilongos believe that love is the salt of life. Ang pag-ibig ay siyang asin ng buhay. Like a dish that needs to be seasoned, our lives need love to make it more fun and exciting. Despite humanity's hardship and sorrow, there is happiness amidst one's toil and suffering because of love. Francisco Balagtas, the William Shakespeare of the Philippines, testifies to the power of love in these words. Oh, love is so powerful. Once you get into the heart of anyone, everything will be defied if only to give in to your wishes. O oh, pagsintang labis ang kapangyarihan, sampung mag-aamay iyong nasasaklaw. Pag ikaw ay nasok sa puso ni Numan, hahamakin lahat, masunod ka lamang. However, one form of art during courtship that has gone is the tradition of harana. Before, 
in the countryside, folk melodies were sung to court a girl. Harana not only speaks of romantic love, but is an expression of Filipino cultural discourse. In this documentary, the content creators open a cultural discourse and introspect at the lost art of serenading. They explore and look back at the beauty of courtship through love songs and guitar, Filipino aspirations, characteristics, and experiences are expressed using a language. In this example, Tagalog. Now, the art of serenading is replaced by texting or social media. You have, like to give, you have to give it a kind of slow death. You know? Slow death? Yeah. yeah. The music. Yeah. In Havana, that's one of the kind of, you know, we've sort of exhausted all the things that you have inside in outpourings. And it's like saying to the girl, you're saying, this is all I have, this is all what I am. When I was a boy, I remember the old musicians in our town tell stories about men who sang and wrote beautiful songs and published songs that we don't hear today, songs that they used for serenading. It then became clear to me I had to find this man, this man called Haranista. Pwede pong magtanong? Alam niyo papuntang katanawan? Ah, okay. Pwede po magtanong? Saan po pupuntang katanawan? Diretso po? Ah, gano'n kalayo? Malayo pa ho. Malayo pa? Ilang oras? Mga 3 hours pa, 2 hours. Ah, gano'n? Okay. Pwede magtanong? Saan po pupuntang katanawan? Diretso lang? Anong mas madali po? Adon. Ibigang siyang lalaki, nangaharang na muna. Hmm, tapos yung babae, dudungaw pa yun. Tabintaan na. Love for Filipinos plays a part in their value. The emotional aspect, which at times runs more deeply than the intellectual dimension. Perhaps, since Filipinos are passionate, a significant element of daily life is affected. Choices usually revolve around what a person likes or dislikes. However, love also involves friends, siblings, and parents in Filipino culture. As Cebuano says, it is easier to block flood than love. Mas madaling pigilin ang alon o baha kaysa pag-ibig. For instance, if one circle of friends does not approve of the suitor, the suitor will not be treated well 
or might be belittled. On the other hand, Filipinos can fall in love with the help of acquaintances or a circle of friends. For example, if a man likes a woman, he will usually find more information from her best friend or relatives. For example, her favorite food and hobbies. Traditionally, a suitor's friend accompanies him as he woos the woman. One example is showcased in the dialogue of a family's interactions in Wanted, a Chaperone by Wilfredo Maria Guerrero, written in 1948. Here, Don Francisco reminds his children about the values of respect and virtues as ideals of a conservative kind. He promotes proper familial values and upholds them as best as he can. However, he encounters conflicts with the traditional gender ideals he has in mind. Our university held a table reading based on this play. I played Nena, which was presented live via Zoom and aired simultaneously on our department's official Facebook page. From a feminist perspective, Nena and other women characters in this satire call for the reader to realize the essentiality of giving the female gender what is worthy for them. This play deviates from the pre-imposed expectations of the patriarchal society from women, especially during the Spanish era when women were chaperoned to the readiness of the female gender to stand for changes during the American period in the Philippines. Nothing? Che, a girl going to a party and chaperoned and nothing happened? What really happened, Nena? Nothing happened, and you know it. Che, how dare you shout at me? Don't talk to my mother like that, Nena. Bobo, stupido, standing there like a statue. Statue? What statue? The statue of a dumbbell, dumbbell. Gaga! Hey, you. Don't start calling my sister names. She started it. Your son took my daughter out to the party last night. Why do you allow your daughter to go out alone? Nena insisted there was nothing wrong, but my intuition told me it might be wrong. Shut up, Fred. Why, Mama? Why do you allow your daughter to go out alone with my respectable son? What's respectable about him? People saw them come and go unchaperoned. Yes! Unchaperoned. Imagine, imagine a girl going to a party alone. She was with your son, wasn't she? Unfortunately. Then if my daughter was with your son, what danger was there? People are talking about last night. But what happened? What happened, Fred? Dear. Nothing, mama. A theater such as this was eclipsed in the 1930s by Hollywood talkies or talking pictures. People will patronize American movies. World War II temporarily paralyzed Philippine movies due to Japanese-imposed censorship. For me, the true meaning of love gives direction to our lives. If there is no love, there will be no civilization. We will surely perish if we do not love and understand. We learn to turn our energies to pursue other endeavors such as music, philosophy, and mathematics because of emotions such as pity and joy. The concept of love is not limited to romantic relationships. It also refers 
to relationships with family, friends, and God. For example, in a family where siblings are close, a brother may exercise excessive protection, constricting his sister's suitor or boyfriend. Extreme love can contribute to why siblings may have conflicts. Therefore, the saying of the Ilocanos is true. Too much tenderness makes the heart cry. Ang labis na lambing ay siyang nagpapaiyak sa puso. Indeed, love should be moderated. Aristotle, the Buddhist and Taoist says that any excess is wrong. Love is mighty. According to the Bible, love is the greatest, combined with faith and hope. True love lasts and understands. If there are unclear things, love dispels them. Love makes us happy. Whether there are shortcomings or weaknesses, love conquers them. Indeed, love boosts a person's perspective and self-confidence. Only in love can there be change. No, love makes us human. Since we can love, we are separated from the category of animals. Love in Filipino culture is influenced by other values such as shame, camaraderie, double standard, and machismo. However, in anything, moderation, especially in love, is essential. Indeed, love is like a spark or perfume that spreads fragrance to others. Pass it on in parts. It only takes a spark to get the fire going And soon all those around can warm up in its glowing the Filipinas, as global citizens, struggle in the fields of politics, legal, economics, and culture. In an accelerating phase of the level of integration comprising bonds between states. In this vein, it is crucial to articulate nonviolence locally, nationally, regionally, and globally in the face of an intensifying global consciousness. Examples include participation in nonviolent movements and a strong desire to attain freedom for the nation. A painting that communicates the love for freedom of our nation is Polyarium. The giant-sized paintings Situated in the National Museum, one at the Madrid Exposition of Fine Arts in 1884. The painter was Juan Luna. The painting was donated by the Spanish government in 1956 to the Filipinos. This painting symbolizes the spoils of war, tyrants and the king. The heavy and strong brush strokes expressed anger over the abuses and cruelties suffered by Filipinos. The lines and color captured the pathos and barbarism under Spanish colonizers. The vertical lines convey the strength and stability of an oppressor, while the horizontal lines show repose of the dead and injured, while diagonal lines are the strong arms pulling the gladiators. Juan Luna is also known for many paintings such as the Blood Compact. Another shining proud and golden moment of Philippine arts is under the sunlight. MacArthur's historic return to the Philippines almost 70 years ago in Leyte was frozen in time. We see in MacArthur's Landing by Anastasio Caedo 
the way the forces recaptured the Philippines as they walked on Philippine soil again by wading to the shore. The liberation of the Filipinos from the Japanese is portrayed through the shallow pool where the bronze statues stand. This work showcased the classical realism of Kaido. Far more than a moment in history, this work reveals a moment of intense human emotion and a promise fulfilled. At this juncture in 1987, President Corazon Aquino, whose dedication to bring back the democratic status of the country from being under the Marcos dictatorship will be one of the most remarkable agents of reform. She believes that real power is not in the government's tanks, artilleries, and weapons. Instead, power belongs to the people, and they can defeat tyranny without the need for violence. During this period, the saying, Flowers defeat guns, the ig ng bulaklak ang baril, will remain a legacy for future generations. Eduardo Castrillo, a sculptor and artist, will leave marks about freedom in Philippine society with his sculpture such as the People's Monument, Binhi ng Kalayaan, and Bonifacio Monument. The Binhi ng Kalayaan, or Seeds of Freedom, is a work that shows the seemingly serious problems and how they are eased because of love. The person who knows how to love achieves what he wants because of sincerity or authenticity. In summary, the first part of the module discussed about the concept of loob or the indigenous thoughts of the Filipinos and the second part on how these are seen in our artworks. To date, church structures are addressed by dioceses with minimal help from national agencies. Ancestral homes surroundings remain vulnerable, especially in provinces. Earthquakes and typhoons damage these structures that are cultural repositories of the values of simplicity and identity of all Filipinos. Artworks in the Philippines remind every Filipinos that we are stewards and protectors of the past. We should also preserve lives and livelihood as we face the future. Thank you very much. Maraming salamat. Well, that is all I have for today. Things change. The past, present, and future, and their perplexities. Until then, thank you very much.